Hey, what is going on, everybody? Today, I want to take a look at some Amazon bestseller data, best selling books from Amazon. Over the last 11 years, we have data about top 50 best selling books. All right, let's look at the data set real quick and then we'll get into our objectives. All right, first, we have the author name, the user rating of the book, how many reviews the book has gotten, the price the year it was a bestseller, and the genre. All right, so let's just jump right in. Uh, objective number one, show authors who have had multiple bestsellers in multiple years. All right, let's make a pivot table out of this. Control A, insert, pivot table. Let's put it on a new worksheet. I'm going to pull in author name, and let's pull in the count of the book name. So if we see count above one, that means that author has had more than one bestseller. Let's sort that from high to low real quick. And here we could see many, many authors have had more than one bestseller. But just to follow the question to a T, let's throw in a filter that gets rid of any authors with only one bestseller. And here's how you do that value filters. Let's do greater than or equal to. Is the count of name greater than or equal to two? And as I roll down, that should get rid of any ones. So there we go. All right, let's jump into number two. Show a histogram of bestsellers by price using $3 increments. There are a couple different ways to do histograms in Excel. One uses the data analysis tool pack. The second uses the histogram or the frequency function. The third way is by using a pivot table. This is kind of a sideways way to approach it, but it's my favorite. It's quick. It's easy. Let's check it out. Control A, select all the data. Let's insert another pivot table in a new worksheet. Let's pull price on the rows field. So here we see all the different prices in the data set. Let's pull in a count of price in the values field. I'm gonna make that a count. So we can see the count of books by different price point. So now all we need to do is right click in the price in the row fields and go to group. And let's do, see it has our range starting at zero, ending in $105. And by, what do we want our buckets or our groupings by? And the objective said three. So let's do three. And there we have it. Check it out. Count of books by price in $3 increments. But wait a minute. That's not a histogram. How do we make it one? This is my method that I use. So let's highlight that. Let's go to conditional formatting, data bars. There we go. We can get a nice kind of mimic of a frequency histogram using bin sizes of three. So there you go, six to $8. That is the most common price for a bestseller book out of these 550 total. All right, objective number three, show the same info, but by year. Okay, that's easy. So let's go back to our pivot table we just created and pull the year field in columns. Let's get rid of grand total because that's not really helping us here. And let's make these fields all the same size. All right, cool. So what this shows, and this is really cool, is what is the distribution of price by year? So you can see any kind of shifts in the kind of bell curve, so to speak, of pricing. So look, as I go from left to right, when I start hitting like 2014, 2015, I'm seeing a shift lower. Like the pricing is clustering more at like the three and $5 level, more and more kind of as we go on with time, which lets you know that the, the mean or the kind of center of each bell curve is getting cheaper and cheaper as we go on. All right, similar question for objective four, show a histogram of bestsellers by rating. 
and rating is what they're talking about right here, user rating. So let's do the same thing. Let's create a new pivot table this time. Control A, insert pivot table. Let's pull in user rating on the rows field. Here is all of the ratings. And let's pull in a count of ratings in values. And we don't even need to make buckets because there's only a small uh, series of different ratings here. Let's throw on our histogram one more time or our conditional formatting for value, value bars. There you go, 4.8. You can see that is the most common rating and kind of tails off from there, 4.9. Got a few as well. And there's a sub objective to number four, show that also by year. And that's simple as we just saw, let's pull year in columns. Let's make sure our columns are all the same width. Let's get rid of grand total by right clicking and resize one more time. And there we could see average user rating or the distribution of ratings over time it looks like it's going up. So as we get to 2019, it's clustering more and more at the high end as opposed to, let's say, 2011 or so. All right, this brings us to our last one. Is there a correlation between the number of reviews and user rating? All right, so I'm going to pull up a scatter plot for that. Let's look at user reviews versus rating. So the thinking here or the hypothesis is if we got a ton of reviews on a bestseller, does it necessarily indicate a higher rating? So let's check that out. I'm going to highlight those two fields, insert, scatter plot. There's my scatter plot. Of course, I like to name it user review count verse, let's call it user rating. And because we don't have any ratings below three, I'm going to clip my axis just to make that a little easier to read. So let's right click, format axis, and under minimum bound, let's do three. So now we see three is the absolute minimum over here. And nothing really clearly stands out to me that indicates the more reviews you get, the higher the user rating. So let me just throw a quick trend line through these points. And it's basically flat, which indicates little correlation. If I was to pull up an R square on this, um, I'm sure it's close to zero. Let's check it out. Whoop, format trend line. Display R square. Yeah, it's a real small number. Let's see if I can expand this a bit. Yeah, it's uh, three. And then imagine we had a decimal place here and moved and put six zeros or five zeros before that three. That's how small that is. <clears throat> Quick tip here at the end, R square is the correlation coefficient squared. So what I mean by that is, let's get to quickly run the function that gets the correlation between, let's say, user rating in one array and reviews in another. So we can see the correlation coefficient is known by the Greek letter rho or R. Now, if I squared that, it would be R squared, which is our value down here in the chart. So let's do that. Let's exponentiate that to the second power. And you would get this same, this uh, roughly three to E to the negative points or negative six. So that's just a quick tip at the end showing you exactly what R square is. It's known as the you know goodness of fit stat in the field of statistics. It's simply the correlation coefficient squared. Hope you enjoyed. This was just a quick video showing you how I would chop up this Amazon bestseller data, couple 
kind of easy breezy objectives. Hope you enjoyed. Ask me any questions. Talk to you soon.